that scripture is. We're in the uh, uh, the book of uh, we're in uh, Luke. We're in chapter eleven, I believe. And we're reading verses one through, uh, sorry, chapter 11, verses one through four. And I read, and it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray as John also taught his disciples. And he said unto them, when ye pray, say our father, which art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as in heaven, so in earth. Give us day by day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. May the Lord... Bless the reading and hearing of his most holy words. Well, again, thanks. Good evening and uh, welcome back. It's good to see everyone's uh, lovely faces this evening. We have another uh, wonderful uh, service for us tonight. Uh, there is going to be a praise and worship. And uh, after our praise and worship, uh, uh, we will have a, a our speaker is coming tonight, none other than our very own uh, Elder Randolph. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we have the victory. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Satan, you have to flee. Oh, tell me who can stand before us when we call on that great name, Jesus. Jesus, precious Jesus, we have the victory. Oh, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we have the victory. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Satan, you have to flee. Oh, tell me who can stand before us when we call on that great name jesus jesus precious jesus we have the victory oh victory oh victory we have the victory victory oh victory we have the victory in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we have the victory. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Satan, you have to flee. Oh, tell me who can stand before us when we call on that great name. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, we have the victory. Amen, 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 and amen. All right, we are ready for uh, the word of God tonight that's coming to us from none other than our very own uh, Elder Randolph. And uh, I want to just mention that uh, uh, not only uh, uh, is uh, Elder Randolph one of our a fine uh, uh, preachers uh, at Holiness Tabernacle, but he is a very fine uh, Sunday school superintendent. Uh, can I get an amen? <laughs> amen. I, I, I really enjoy uh, having uh, Elder Randolph around as our Sunday school superintendent. He is a great su Sunday school superintendent and a wonderful teacher. And, and I appreciate him and all the wonderful things that he's doing for uh, uh, our Sunday school uh, department. So um, at this time, I give you into the hands of uh, Elder Randolph and afterwards we'll be in the hands of uh, uh, Pastor Pruitt, amen. 
Amen. Let us uh, look to the Lord in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, oh God, we thank you again uh, for this opportunity to share uh, what you have given me with your people, oh God. I ask that you just be with me, uh, oh God, and let these words, oh God, uh, let them just not be words that are on this paper, on this iPad, oh God, but let it uh, be something to encourage your people. We love you. We give your name, praise, honor, and glory. And it's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. I give honor uh, to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, tonight. And I, uh, my respect to, to our pastor, our first lady. Uh, again, thank you for, for this opportunity, sir. Uh, I was telling Sister Randolph um, yesterday, um, please cherish this, uh, this opportunity. Um, this is um, quite a few times now I've, I've been uh, on to... Uh, speak during the consecration services. And I, I really uh, enjoy um, being a, a part of this. Uh, and it is, it's, it is great. And to the rest of the saints, um, um, just good to see everybody here tonight. And of course, uh, Sister Randolph, my respect uh, to her. And uh, thank you, uh, Elder Maybe, for uh, introducing me uh, tonight. Uh, I wanna do something a little uh, different tonight I do have some scriptures and some thoughts, uh, but I want to talk a little about my, myself tonight, just a little bit about myself. Um, the Lord reminded me uh, about something I was going through, and my prayer is that it might help someone el somebody else tonight. So our theme uh, for this 2024 consecration is chasing new life in Christ. The Lord reminded me before I had a mind to really chase or pursue, I had to realize there is new life. Uh, when you understand the word chase, uh, each definition explains an end result of overtaking something or, or a capture or winning, uh, attracting or gaining something from the actual chase. I think of an athlete uh, who is trying to win a championship. Uh, there is a want in them to practice. Uh, there's a want in them to train hard. There's a want in them to eat right, to take care of their body, uh, to get sufficient rest because uh, they know, again, the end result is the fulfillment of not only being victorious, uh, but being considered the absolute best. So there is a drive in you uh, to know that this chase is not in vain, but there is something that will benefit or add to my life once I gain control or get closer to what I'm actually chasing. Uh, I can remember uh, as a cop, uh, we received a call for a stolen vehicle. So my partner and I, uh, we turned the corner and there was the car uh, right there with the suspects right there in the vehicle. So we pulled the car over, we verified the plate. And as we approaching the car, they just took off. Boom, they're gone. And uh, so as, as we and several other police cars were in pursuit the suspects, they were running red lights. Uh, they almost hit some pedestrians. Uh, they were almost ran some other cars off the road. Just those cars just trying to avoid uh, being hit. It was just so much going on. They were driving completely out of control. The final straw was they almost drove through some gas station pumps. Uh, this could have caused an explosion uh, where vehicles could be damaged and people would be severely injured or even dead. So the shift commander said, stop the pursuit. Stop it. Um, he saw that there was no reward in continuing the chase because of all the risks that were involved. So again, I must know that this chase will be beneficial for my life, I had to understand 
this pursuit of Christ is going to lead to eternal life. So there truly is new life in Christ. But it is nothing but the trick of the enemy to make you believe uh, there is no new life. Uh, when I came back to Christ, um, that is the, the thought the enemy placed into my mind. I immediately was down on myself um, because I knew better. I knew better. I was raised in the church, and at one point I had given my life to Christ. I knew right from wrong. But since I lived in sin, there were things in me that just didn't fall off when I rededicated my life. Now, this is where the problem began. And I started to doubt this new life. I got angry. I got angry with myself uh, when the trials and the tribulations, when they started. I thought that, I thought if I would have just stayed safe, I would not be going through all of this. Some things were easy to shake off, but like Deacon Howard, I could argue with the best of them. Uh, the, the combination of, of words that I use, I could just cut somebody down. Now, I'm trying to contain that little member, as the Bible says. Uh, the more and more I reflect on the past, though, the angrier I got. I remember how my mouth got me into trouble and how my actions didn't allow me to achieve uh, certain goals. So when I think of a chase, I think of, I think of fast, uh, a top speed movement, an all out sprint. Uh, the term high speed chase comes to mind when I think of uh, this pursuit or this chase. Uh, since I was doubting this new life, I could feel my chase going from a sprint to a slow jog and I knew that I was about to start walking. So let me turn your attention to Isaiah, the 43rd chapter. So here in Isaiah, uh, Isaiah is prophesizing about the, the exile to Babylon. Uh, Judah, Judah, excuse me, repeated idolatry had cost them everything. All they could see uh, for the rest of their lives was slavery. But Isaiah was trying to tell them about a savior, not just from their current state, but a savior from sin and for the whole world. I'm gonna share my screen. All right, if I, I can just get a couple thumbs up. All right, thank you so much. So just a couple points that I wanna leave with you tonight. And the first point is we were chosen to run this race. We we're chosen to run this race. Look at what God did just to get us. Uh, when you read the 43rd uh, chapter, he says in here, for I have ransomed for you. Uh, when, I, when I looked that up, it says the redemption of a prisoner or a kidnapped person. Uh, one of our consecration scriptures was from uh, Romans 6, where it talked about death or sin no longer uh, has power uh, of us. And I asked the question, well, why? Uh, because when Christ died, he broke the power of sin. But we, what I liked about this was we are so precious to God when he chose us, he was willing to give up everything just to get us. Verses three and four say, for I am the Lord, your God, the Holy One of Israel. And this is in the New Living Translation the Holy One of Israel, your savior. 
I gave Egypt as a ransom for your freedom. I gave Ethiopia and Seba in your place. Others were given in exchange for you. I traded their lives for yours because you are precious to me. You are honored and I love you. God so loved the world that he gave or he ransomed Christ for us. So that was the first thing I had to learn. The second thing was just because I am saved now, it does not mean I will not go through some things. Brother Mabry III talked about in Christ, there is a way of escape. I had to realize these things I was going through now are different from the things that I was going through before. Different from when I was in sin. They are different now because I have Christ to get me through those things. The second verse in that 43rd chapter says, when you go through deep waters, I will be with you. When you go through rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burned up. The flames will not consume you. This lets me know every day is not going to be a sunny day. It says in here, when I go, when you go through these things. So it lets me know I'm going to go through them. So yes, I cannot swim and these waters are deep. I can't just stand up in the water and, and be okay, but I'm not going to drown. I'm not going to drown. There will be some flames I have to walk through, and it may be hot, but I will not be burned or consumed uh, like the Hebrew boys. And again, why? The answer is right here in, in verse 2, because the Lord will be with us. So that was the second thing that I had to, had to learn and understand. The third thing was, is the race is already set for me to win. Already set. Because it is set, I know the chase is worth it. Uh, in the NLT, the next uh, section of this chapter is titled, The Lord's Promise of Victory. In other words, the battle is not mine, but it's the Lord's. Verses 14 through 17 says, um, and, I, and I like this. I think Sister Randolph said this the other night because this uh, um, version says, this is what the Lord says. Your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, for your sakes, I will send an army against Babylon, forcing the Babylonians to, free, to flee in those ships they are so proud of. I am the Lord, your Holy One, Israel's creator and king. I am the Lord who opened a way through the waters, making a dry path through the sea. I called forth the mighty army of Egypt with all its chariots and horses. I drew them beneath the waves and they drowned, their lives snuffed out like a smoldering candle wick. A few verses before this, God asks, now when you have when you have heard these false gods promise to do something like this, when have you ever heard that? When have you heard these false gods say things like this and then do it? Then he reminded them of what he did to Egypt and how Israel passed through the sea on dry land. And that ultimate prize, the reward for their for their earthly chase, is seeing him in perfect peace. So I had to learn to stop dwelling on these things of the past. That was, you know, early what I was saying was, was, was really bothering me, the things I was thinking about. Uh, yes, these trials may appear to look the same, but again, they are not. Verses 18 and 19 says, 
But forget all that. It is nothing compared to what I am going to do. For I'm about to do something new. See, I have already begun. Do you not see it? It will make a pathway through the wilderness. I will create rivers in the dry wasteland. I love these verses uh, because only God uh, can change things around us in this in this way like this. I, I've been uh, to the desert multiple times. And you know, when you went out, you better have plenty of water with you when you're when you're in the desert. But but when God said he can create a river in the wasteland and make a pathway through the wilderness, that lets me know he can lead and guide us through anything, any situation, any dark place, any shadow of death, uh, not just lead me, but I will not be tired from the chase because even in the wasted land, he will provide exactly what I need to get through it. That part, uh, the part that encouraged me the most uh, was the Lord saying he was going to do something new in that scripture. And I just want to close with this. What I love about God is he's so powerful. Uh, he, he, took, he can take things that I went through and allows me to use them today for his glory. Those things, again, that I was upset about, and I look at them as a hindrance um uh, to to my i look at those things as a hindrance but but god can just take those things and and just recreate them where they benefit me and they and they glorify him and i'm reminded when i when i think of those things i'm reminded of when somebody conducts an interview so sometimes the employer uh, they'll ask you the question of what is your biggest weakness and I was always trained, I don't know about y'all, but I was always trained in the way you kind of get around that question or get through that question, you take that weakness and show how it's really just a strength. And so that's that's what I'm talking about here. This is what I love about God, uh, that this is what Christ can do in your life when you seek him fully and really look to have a new life in Christ. Please pray for me.